Um, as the deputy just alluded to, on the very first day of our task force, May the 12th, we identified a stolen car that was connected to gang activity here in Vancouver. The team commander in charge of the task force was quickly able to mo mobilize resources from our investigations division and our operations divisions. The vehicle was uh, um, exhibiting suspicious behavior and again, as I said, it was a stolen vehicle. I can't go into the exact suspicious behavior, but this is a common theme that you have all seen over and over again regarding gas canisters in the back of the vehicle. Two people were arrested, and one of the suspects in this of particular concern is a young offender. There was, as I said, gas canisters found inside, and one of the individuals had a loaded firearm on his person. This investigation is ongoing, and we do anticipate forwarding charges to Crown Council in the near future. It's not uncommon for the police to interdict and stop this type of violence, not only in the city of Vancouver, but throughout the region. I will take you now back to Task Force Turnkey, which was an initiative started by the Vancouver Police and supported by all jurisdictions in the Lower Mainland, including our partners at CFSCU. In that task force, we interdicted multiple occasions on this type of event. Some we were able to speak to you about, and some, as the Chief alluded to, we were not at the time because it was sensitive to the ongoing investigation. Task Force Turnkey was launched in March of 2017, and it included a number of investigative projects that led to the recommendation of more than 200 charges against 38 violent individuals involved in the lower, gangland, lower mainland gang conflict. Many of you may remember it also included the complete incarceration and dismantling of the Kang Latimer crime group, which is linked to the Red Scorpions. During that task force, operational members became aware of multiple planned events and interdicted on them. One of these events resulted in conspiracy to commit murder charges. Other events we um, it interdicted on, we disrupted and recommended firearms charges. And another event that we uh, had significant disruption was a rural property in Langley where we located what was known to be or became known to be a staging area for these murders. At that rural property, we located a dozen guns, two improvised explosive devices, one prohibited device, and that was an overcapacity magazine, eight stolen vehicles, multiple stolen license plates, gas canisters, black clothing with tags still on it um, from Walmart, I believe it was. It's a common theme we see, clothing ready to disguise, and gloves to hide identity for fingerprints, etc. These kill kits were all assembled and ready to go at this farm. Now, we didn't get charges in that farm, but as the chief also alluded to, the civil forfeiture uh, was enacted on that farm when we could not get uh, criminal charges at the end of the investigation, and we did uh, have a successful seizure related to that investigation. Lastly, one uh, detail I'd like to share with you is another common theme that we're seeing in this gang conflict and that is the flying in of individuals, criminal individuals from other jurisdictions to Vancouver to commit these crimes. During Task Force Turnkey, we saw it on multiple occasions. Individuals were flown in with the specific purpose of committing murder in the Lower Mainland. They were also flown in with the specific purpose of taking over drug lines using force, which often will result in murder. It is another common theme. Because of this, it's very difficult for us to identify these individuals because they're not known to the members of the police community in this jurisdiction. Thank you.